there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna do a painting on this paper that I've never used before, so hopefully it all goes well. This is the Hanmule Agave watercolor paper. It's one of their Climate Pledge um, products, one of their climate-friendly products, and it is 70% agave and 30% cotton, so I'm really curious to see how this works. It is a block, so I don't need to tape it down or anything. I'm just gonna fold the lid back behind it, and I have got a, um, a reference photo open up on my computer. It's from Unsplash and I will link it down below. And um, it's basically a bouquet that's wrapped in, news uh, not newspaper, but like, um, like a brown butcher paper. And I thought this would be really kind of fun. It's not a precious image to me and I thought it'd be just kind of fun to, uh, to sketch. So I'm gonna start by sketching the, uh, the wrapping here. And I'm using a Albright Drawer watercolor pencil because I just have, I have a random assortment of watercolor pencils um, on my desk. If you've ever seen that pencil rack in my like Snapchat videos, it's behind me. Um, I just kind of keep, I have a set of like, um, I do have a full set of Albright Drawer pencils, but I just have a few randos in this set. And I have um, also a full set of Spectrum Noir um, watercolor pencils. Supposedly they're they're light fast. They say they are in the packaging. I'm not sure if I quite believe it, but I pretty much just use them for like cards and for doing um, like sketches underneath my main um, like my main painting. So all right, so there's the wrapper, and I don't think I'm gonna sketch on the flower because I don't really think I need to. I do want to. There's like a um, there's like a well, there's a tag and a string, so maybe I will put the little tag in there just to um, just to give it a little something, just a little interest, you know, just something a little bit different. But that's really all I'm going to put there. And uh, you could fuss with the paper and you could add more wrinkles in it. You could do all sorts of stuff like that. I think I'll just keep my pencil handy if I want to go add some lines in later, but I'm going to leave it the way it is. Um, I'm going to use my M-Gram watercolors. Now, I know the M-Grams are kind of expensive. I don't want you to feel obligated to um, to go buy anything special. Use whatever you want. I'm just, I haven't used this, uh, this set in a long time. And, you know, these were purchased individual tubes. And, uh, you know, I've repurchased tubes as I've run out over the years. I've had this palette going for... Um, over 20 years, so, you know, you just, I just replenish as needed. Um, so, you know, you don't have to go buy all the tubes at once. Go buy what you need, go buy a few tubes at a time. Now, I'm starting off with this Viridian color. M. Graham, I think, has one of the nicest Viridians. Um, easy to re-wet and just lovely. I'm going to add, I want to tone that down, though, quite a bit. I'm going to add some yellow ochre to that, or raw sienna, whichever you prefer. You don't need to have both of those colors in your palette, honestly. You could have yellow ochre or raw sienna, I think, in my opinion. And I'm going to add, I think, some, you know what, I'm going to do some phthalo blue into that. So I've got, I'm hopefully going to end up with kind of an interesting color. Let me add a little bit of, um, actually I want to granulate a little bit, so I think I'll add some burnt umber and also some ultramarine. And just try to force a little granulation. Oh, there we go. That's a pretty color. It's going to be kind of, I want it kind of like a stormy uh, blue and I want it really wet because if I have it really wet, then I should be able to get some granulation. Now I'm using my reference photo as a very, um, I'm going very loosely by the reference photo. I'm not, I actually should probably go with a smaller brush than this. Uh, we'll see how we do. Oh, I think that'll be all right. I basically just want to, um, just get some ideas from the reference photo, but not really follow it slavishly. Sorry, my hand's in the way there. Isn't that a pretty color? So I'm just, what I'm doing here, I'm not, I don't want to have something where I have to feel really precious about it because I've never used this paper before. I think if you're starting with like, if you're using a, a paint or a paper you've never used before and, um, you plan out some big masterpiece, you're you're kind of um, destined to fail a little bit because you're um, you're not used to it. You don't know what it's going to do yet, and it may be that it is 
not the right paper for the technique that you want to do. So if you're starting off with a paper you've never used before, I highly recommend you just kind of have some fun with it and just play and see and see what you end up with. Oh, I love that. I like that. I think I want to charge in some other colors into some of those wet washes. Let's do a little yellow ochre. I also want this to kind of have a little bit of a fall vibe to it, so. I'm just dripping in some colors. I want to get some uh, interesting textures. Um, this does seem to act a little bit more like a cellulose paper than a cotton paper. It does seem to be heavily sized. I like a heavily sized paper. This is kind of a first impressions, I guess. <laughs> I don't tend to review paper. I'll tend to say what I like and what I don't like, but I don't tend to like actually do proper reviews of paper. Maybe I should. Um, like I'm really loving the bamboo mixed media, pa mixed media paper. I'm trying to just hold this uh, usually I turn my, my, and this is one of the reasons, honestly, this is one of the reasons I don't use my M-grams very often. Um, I like to turn my paper, my, my paper a lot while I'm working and to keep everything in frame. It's very difficult when I have such a large palette on my table. So that's, that's a big reason I don't use my M-grams. People ask me what's my favorite paint and I'm like, well, you know, it's probably M-gram, but because I have it in this big palette and I don't really want to I don't want to have another tin. I have so many palettes. Kind of messed that leaf up. Um, I feel like this paint, this paper, wants to skip. I mean, it's it's it seems to be evenly. So oh, look at that! Isn't that pretty? Maybe I should blot up that puddle, though, because I have a feeling I'm gonna get a backwash. Ah, oh, I like that though. Those heavily sized papers will increase your granulation too. So if you're really uh, into granulation and it's really popular, those super granulating colors, if you're uh, crazy about those, you're going to have a better result with granulating colors on a heavily sized paper. And you don't have to go buy. And something I'm thinking about doing, let me know in the comments below if this would be interested, interesting for you. I'm thinking about going through the tubes I have and making my own super granulating palette with what I have because chances are you probably have some of those colors in your palette too and I think it's fun when you can figure out how to you know get a very similar effect for less that's pretty I like that I think that's gonna be nice I still might need to blot a little bit more I get a rag off screen that I'm just blotting my brush on off so I can sop up the petals the petals there you do need some standing paint to get that nice pretty granulation effect but you don't want it super super stain, uh, standing all right, I'm going to go back to the larger brush, which is a number 12 round. These are my Creative Mark Mimics, the uh, Faux Squirrel. Now, Creative Mark makes a Faux Kalinsky as well, so if you like a snappier brush that's not quite as absorbent, you may prefer that. They're more expensive, but I have to say I like the squirrels better personally. Gosh, I almost feel like all I need to do is wet this and leave it. It's almost pigmented enough. Um, if I'd added a little bit more, it definitely would be. I'm going to try to leave a gap right next to that so I don't end up uh, having all that paint kind of slurp into the wrapping. Oh, you know what? I should have, I was going to go, <laughs> I was going to go around the tag, but I didn't. Oh, well. Say lovey. Make a little gap. All right. Well, maybe that tag will just not happen. You know what? I'm just going to scrub that away. All right. Let's use some colors we've already used. Let's throw in some yellow ochre. Or raw sienna. Use whatever you like. Going for that earthy, earthy yellow brown color. Now some burnt umber. Mix that with a little bit of ultramarine. That'll give us some extra granulation and it will tone down the red. I'm going to put that where I'd have a little bit more dark anyway. I usually put backgrounds in, but I'm not going to do that today, I don't think.
think while I have these colors, I'll try some raw umber. You know, I never use, actually, that's Van Dyke Brown. Oh, let's do Van Dyke Brown. Um, I find that I rarely use raw umber. I don't use Van Dyke Brown either that much in watercolor. Trying to meet that up to those flowers as close as I can. All right, I'm gonna go back in with a pencil and redraw um, some of the details. Maybe even get the the string. Can even go in there and shade a little bit with a pencil. I'm not really putting a lot of pressure there. Um, although, even though I'm not putting a lot of pressure in there, sometimes though, it's enough that you won't be able to scrub it out afterwards. Try to be uh, mindful when you're putting in these um, these lines that they're lines that you want to remain so that you don't end up having to scrub something out later. You're much better off to. Uh, to get it right on the first go. I love the crinkles in the brown paper. You might not want to put a ton of detail in there if it looks good, if you like the way it's looking. And I'm hoping I'll get some pretty granulation and I will just want to leave it there. Hmm. That's kind of nice. I'm liking that so far. Okay, let's do a sunflower. This bouquet does have a pretty sunflower. I'm going to, um, I'll just pick up some of this cad yellow deep. Gamboge, Indian yellow, any of those will be, will be sufficient. I'm gonna just kind of draw around the, the center. And I am going to pull in some petals. Also have some in the front that I will paint the center around. And I'm gonna grab a little bit. Oh, actually I could do some burnt umber. Let it kind of bleed up. Reshape some of those petals if I want to. Maybe even a little bit of purple. Some dioxazine violet. And we'll use that elsewhere, so don't worry if you think that looks weird. Oh, you know what? Let's grab another uh, watercolor pencil. Let's grab something, maybe like a, an orangey tone. And then we can go in and add some lines, some marks. Keep this a nice light and fresh vibe. I'm really liking this. It's very carefree. I think part of it is just like, yeah, I'm not worried about it. I'm using this paper for the first time, so I don't have a, a lot writing on this. I'm keeping it, you know, nice and easy. And I'm not like, putting a lot of pressure on myself to create something fantastic. Uh, I'm gonna grab some permanent alizarin crimson and mix it in with that purple, give it kind of a whiny color. That's pretty, isn't it? How do you like having all that mixing space on camera? I don't know. It seems like it's, it seems kind of a, kind of, it seems like a lot, but these could be mums. That's a nice fall flower, isn't it? 
Yeah, let's make these mums. We'll just put a bunch of like little spiky. Put a little spiky. Spiky spikes. So let's do one up here too so we have a nice uh We have a nice, whatchamacallit, a nice uh, three, odd number, a nice odd number. And oh, let's grab another pencil. I'm kind of digging the, grabbing the pencils. I don't know about you, but I am. I was at a, actually I was at a stamp show. I already had a set of, full set of Albert Drewers, but I was at a stamp show and one of the vendors had like, it was random. It was like in a bag, like in a baggie and it had like, oh, look at that, I like that. Um, it had like, I don't know, maybe like 16 or 20 Albert Drewer watercolor pencils, and I think he only wanted like 12 bucks or something. I can't remember. Uh, so I grabbed it, cause I'm like, well, for like refilling what I already have when they're used up, that's that's such a great deal. And I actually just put these, I use these more often cause they're right next to my, uh, my working space. So kind of keep that in mind, you know? Look for those. Look for those deals. Um, let's see. I feel like I want maybe some like really, really pale. There's some little, I don't even know what these flowers would be, but I feel like I just want something. I don't want white because it's not going to show up, but I feel like I just need some sort of like little filler texture in here. So I'm just going to use this real pale, almost minty green. I the colors blend together too. That's kind of nice. I like that. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of that. I think I'll end up darkening that area. Actually, that might be a pretty color for some splatter because I like that lacy texture. So I think that would be a nice opportunity to do a little, you could splatter it to give you the lacy texture. You could do a toothbrush if you want to really um, define where it goes. I want it to kind of look like baby's breath. I know some people don't like spatter. And I also know there's a lot of controversy with spatter because, um, you know, people could say it's just kind of a cheap trick. It's just a fad. It can be, but if you if you know why you're using the spatter, like maybe you need a little energy, maybe you want to, you know, get those flowers in there. Maybe you want to put some flowers in there and then go in with a liner and connect them. Like I can go in with a liner brush. Let me grab one here. It's hiding from me. I can go in with a liner brush. I can either use a contrasting color or I can even just kind of like connect some of them and give them like some stems, give them a little structure like Queen Anne's Lace or Baby's Breath. So there's never an all or nothing. There's never a you should never do this or you should always do this. That's baloney. You do what's right for your painting and you do what you feel is true to your artwork. And you know, um, the other people that want to criticize that can go pound sand. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna dry, I'm actually gonna let this dry. I'm not gonna dry it because I don't wanna lose a granulation. And when it's dry, we can come in and fit, uh, fill in these little bits that are kind of touching everything else right now. So uh, go have a cup of tea, take a break, and then pause the video and then come back when you're ready to finish it up. All right, I took a nice break. I walked the dog and now my painting is dry. You can see some of the pretty textures that we've got in our brown wrapping here and in some of the foliage. It just adds a nice, um, I think it adds a nice effect, especially a fall themed, uh, fall themed landscape or not landscape, ha, floral. Okay, oh my, it's been a long day. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna start off with the center of this flower here. I'm gonna start by grabbing some, I think I'll just grab some of this this uh, this purple. And I'm also going to add in some brown, the burnt umber. And also I think I'll put in some ultramarine blue. I want to have a nice rich dark. 
And I'm not pre-wetting. I want to just kind of go around the uh, the leaves, the petals rather, the petals of the flower. You could sprinkle a little bit of salt into this if you wanted to have a little bit more texture and have almost that um, that effect of, uh, you know, the seeds and stuff. So go ahead and do that if you want. Or if your colors are nice and granulated, then maybe just let the colors do their thing. Since you don't have a lot of water in here, or we're not loading it up with a lot of water, you might not see as much of an effect. I'm also going to add some sap green in there because you often have these underripe seeds that are a little bit more green. And then while I have that on my brush, I think I'll add some phthalo blue into that. And keeping it kind of dark, I want to go in and add a little bit of some darker shadow and also some foliage. So you can decide whether you prefer to pull a stroke away from you or if you prefer to pull one towards you. It just depends on what you like the best. Um, I do recommend just um, turning your paper if you can't get a comfortable stroke. It's a little bit challenging the way I have this larger block here and I've got so much space taken up by the palette. Uh, so I'll just lift it up when I want to do that. Hopefully my camera can keep up with the focus. I think it's a little bit easier to to pull the stroke so that you're ending on the end. So you're going away from the stem. And I like... I just find lifting up on the stroke a little bit easier, but that's completely up to you. Throw in any other little leaves that you want. Overlap with uh, with more robust color. And that's pretty easy to do because we started off with such pale colors. I like the blue. I think I want to add a little of that phthalo blue, just pretty watered down, but kind of dab that into that area where we had the really pale, uh, kind of bluish gray. Our little imaginary flowers here. And just kind of fill in where you think it needs a little, a little something. You can mix in any colors you've used already. They'll all work because, because they've been used and they're not going to be discordant if you just keep, if you keep mixing and mixing colors that you've already used. Providing you make it look like a leaf and not like a hot mess like this, we should be fine. I don't know what I was doing there. Uh, oh well, we'll just do it somewhere else and it'll look like uh, it's on purpose. Maybe. <laughs> All right, I do want to do a little bit to the brown bag and then I'm going to call it a day. I'm just going to grab a flat brush. This is about a half inch, maybe, well, maybe a little bit more than a half inch. And I'll grab some of this raw sienna or Van Dyke brown, whatever, whatever you want to use. My Van Dyke brown feels a little uh, weak. 
I did pre-spray my palette just because I hadn't used this one in quite a while. Um, I'm just going to go in and, and kind of uh, add some crinkles. These are uh, wet on dry. I'm not going to be blending anything. I want these kind of harsher harsher folds. But they don't want to cover up everything because I got some pretty texture in here that I really want to remain. I think that really gives it a lot of life. It really, I think, makes it um, makes it perk up a little bit. Right. I do feel like the sunflower needs a little something extra because that is kind of the biggest flower. It's more of a focal point, I feel, than some of the others. So I'm going to take some of that yellow. I'm going to take some of the alizarin crimson. Remember, we used that with our purple. And I'm going to use that. I'm going to add some color close to the center and just kind of add those uh, wrinkles, add the veining on our little flower there and also maybe a little bit over here help that perk up away from the green sorry for the sorry for the noise there and maybe just another maybe mix up a darker I want to mix up a darker color I'm going to start I'm going to do the phthalo blue I'm going to do the the Axisine Violet, that's going to make such a dark color because those are two extremely strong um, dark colors. I'm going to add in some sap green. Oh, that's almost a black, isn't it? And I'm going to go and add some stronger dark. Sorry, I've got my hand in the way. I tend to, I like to use my brush at a 90 degree angle because um, it gives me greater control. Any place you just need a darker pop of color, you can add that in. I shouldn't have mixed up so much though because I have an awful lot there. A little more color on there. Is that the color? No, that's not the color I used. I used some Viridian though. Just kind of drag up some veining and then I'll blend out the edges. Might want to scrape in some veining or actually go in with a watercolor pencil. They were just kind of too stark. Sometimes you gotta do that. Sometimes you just gotta adjust as you go. And I'm just trying to grab a pencil. I think will will work. Kind of a dull green. I think I want dull greenish brown. There. And if you want to do the, um, I kind of lost a tie there. I'm going to try doing it with the um, paint, but I might actually need to go in with a white color pencil or like a cream or maybe even a little bit of gouache. Or 
Or maybe I'll just leave it like this because it is kind of nice to have it all transparent if you if you started off that way. But there you have it. I'm going to post in a uh, photo of it all done, all dry. Well, it's all done, but I'm going to let it dry so you don't have the puddles. Um, but I think this is a charming, fun little painting. It helps, you know, shake the rust off. And uh, sometimes we need projects like that to get us in the groove. And this is kind of pretty for fall. So you can plop that up on your mantle and enjoy it. And uh, happy fall. Uh, yesterday was the first day of fall. So I hope you have a wonderful season and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.